Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing fine. And guess what? We are going to continue our session on steps of research. And today we're going to talk about how to formulate hypothesis. I hope you all are excited. Like I'm pretty excited to explore this particular topic. So let's begin. Remember, when we talk about hypothesis, we are just playing the guessing game but in a cool and scientific way. Think of hypothesis like a detective's first hunch about a case. It's not just any wild guess though. It's a smart guess based on what you already know or have seen. Right. So imagine you're noticing something interesting or weird and you start wondering, well, what's going on here? Right. And that's where you kick off. You're looking at this puzzle and trying to come up with a clever idea about how things might be connected right so that's your hypothesis right a hypothesis isn't just a thought or a question it's more like a statement that you can actually check out or test it right think of it as making a bet like saying i bet if i do this then that will happen right you're predicting what you think the outcome of your experiment or research will be now it's super important that your hypothesis is something you can actually test you can't just say i think ghost makes these kind of sounds at night if you have no real way to check if it's true or not unless you have some ghost detected experience right anyway when you're cooking up hypothesis make sure you're clear and to the point no need for fancy words or complicated sentences in the beginning right just be straightforward about what you think will happen and why also think about the things you're comparing or looking at these are your variables like we talked about variables in our previous session right all dependent independent confounding extraneous variable so if you want to check it out you'll just go back and watch that video anyway like if you're checking if sunlight affects how tall a plant grows your variable is the sunlight and the plant's height or growth is your dependent variable right so remember you can have more than one hypothesis for a mystery you're trying to solve maybe you think sunlight affect the plant's height but you also wonder if the type of soil matters too right so that's two hypotheses right there right so in a summary a hypothesis is your educated guess about how things work it's clear it's testable and it's all about making connection between different things you observe right and it's totally okay if your hypothesis turns out to be wrong well that's just a part of science game right you learn then you tweak your guess and you try again and there are types of research hypothesis as well as you can see over the screen we have like six types of hypothesis here we'll talk about simple hypothesis then complex hypothesis then directional non-directional associate and casual and at the end we'll also talk about null hypothesis and alternative th hypothesis right so let's begin our first one simple hypothesis right so you know imagine you have got two friends Let's call them independent and dependent. I'm talking about variable here, right? A simple hypothesis is just like predicting if they'll become friends or not. You're basically saying, I think if independent does this, then dependent will react like that. It's all about the relationship between two. Right? Now let's talk about next hypothesis, which is about complex hypothesis. Let me tell you, suppose you're throwing a party, right? And we are inviting more than two friends this time, right? The complex hypothesis is like guessing how all these friends, you know, more than two independent variables will get along with dependent. It's a bit more complicated because there are more relationships to consider. You can see the example in your screen. Suppose students who engage in regular physical exercise and maintain a balanced diet will have higher academic performance compared to students who do not engage in regular exercise and have an unbalanced diet. So here you are comparing two independent variables and you see what will happen to dependent variable, right? Which is what your academic performance, right? And next we'll talk about directional hypothesis. So by the word you can understand it about something like direction, 
so let me tell you imagine right you are planning a road trip with your friends it's a kind of directional hypothesis is like saying i think if we drive north we'll see mountains not just guessing here if something will happen but also in which direction it's going to happen right this kind of hypothesis usually comes from a theory or previous ideas you have let's take an example here a student who get more sleep on average will score higher on math test compared to those who sleep less right so we are going in one directional hypothesis right next is non directional hypothesis right now let's say you're not sure where your road trip will take you right the non directional hypothesis is like saying let's just drive and see what happens right you don't know if you'll see mountains or beaches or something else you're open to any possibility because you don't have a theory or past data to guide you right for example you can see here exposure to natural light during the work day and employee productivity are related you don't know what will happen but you're going to explore right so that's all about non directional hypothesis next we'll talk about associative and casual hypothesis this one is about figuring out relationships and associative hypothesis is like noticing that when friend is happy the other often is also happy right but you're not sure if one causes the other's happiness so on the other hand a casual hypothesis is like saying whenever independent watches comedies dependent laugh you're suggesting that one thing directly you know causes another right here a casual hypothesis example is increasing the number of hours of sleep each night causes an improvement in student's test right an associated hypothesis example is also there like there is a relationship between the amount of the time students spend on social media and their levels of stress so i hope you got the idea what is associative and casual hypothesis right next we'll talk about null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis well finally think about a game where you have to guess if something is true or not right the null hypothesis is like saying there is no way that's true and we represent it with h0 right that is null hypothesis for example age doesn't affect how good you are at math it is a null hypothesis and on the other hand the alternative hypothesis which we represent as h1 is the opposite it's like saying i bet it does so you might say i think older people are better at math than teenagers right and some of the examples are also here that you can see right like in null hypothesis taking aspirin every day doesn't change your chance of having a heart attack that is null hypothesis but again opposite will be alternative hypothesis like if you take aspirin daily it might affect your heart attack risk so got it let's take another example like null hypothesis says there was no change in the water level this is spring and alternate hypothesis is saying there was a change in the water level this spring i hope you got the point and you tested all these hypotheses your null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis is important when you test it and that we'll talk about in our session later anyway let me tell you the qualities of good hypothesis well you know a good hypothesis is like a crystal ball it should give us a sneak peek into what might happen in the future basically it's your educated guess about what's going to happen in your experiment or study your hypothesis needs to be tight with real observable stuff it's not just a wild guess you base it on things you can actually see and measure think of it like building a house your hypothesis is the blueprint and the observable phenomena are the bricks and the pillars right and don't make your hypothesis a kind of riddle wrapped in mystery inside right it should be straightforward without any complicated jargon or concept it's like explaining the plot of a movie to a friend you wouldn't use complex language right would you 
वेल अगेन योर हाइपोथीसिस शुड बी एज क्लियर एज अ सनी डे एवरी वन शुड बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड वट यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट विदाउट नीडिंग एनी काइंड ऑफ डिक्शनरी नहीं एंड दिस वन इज सुपर कूल लाइक योर हाइपोथीसिस मस्ट बी समथिंग यू कैन टेस्ट थ्रू एक्सपेरिमेंट्स और ऑब्जर्वेशन इट्स लाइक प्रिडिक्टिंग दैट योर फेवरेट टीम विल विन द नेक्स्ट गेम आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट हाइपोथीसिस टेस्टिंग गाइज एंड यू नो योर हाइपोथीसिस ऑल्सो शुड बी अ प्रॉब्लम सॉल्वर a solid hypothesis directly addresses the problem at hand it's like having the right tool for the job you wouldn't use a hammer to fix a computer right you'll need a screwdriver and all this stuff right and your hypothesis should be about a specific issue not a broad statement about life or the universe or everything it's like ordering a pizza you wouldn't just say make me a food right you specify exactly what toppings you want in your pizza right and avoid making sweeping generalization your hypothesis should be based on what you know and can test not on broad assumption think of it as playing a game of darts you aim for a specific point not just anywhere on the board right and it should be technically feasible your hypothesis should be something you can actually test with the tools and techniques you have it's like baking a cake you wouldn't choose a recipe that requires an ingredient that you cannot find in your kitchen right and a great hypothesis can spark new ideas and change the way you think about things your hypothesis should be you know lead to discover new things it's like going on a treasure hunt you're looking to uncover new knowledge right and of course in your hypothesis the relationship between variable is key one variable depends on the other think of it as a dance duo if one moves the other responds right for example if you are studying plant growth the amount of water you give them one variable or independent variable directly affects how tall they grow which will be your independent variable right remember hypothesis is the starting point of your research and it's your you know initial idea that is spark that gets the whole process going right so that was about qualities of good hypothesis and we'll also talk about in this session hypothesis testing actually i wanted to put this session at the end of the in data analysis session but uh, as we are discussing about hypothesis i thought it's better to discuss in one video so i have put this hypothesis testing here in your screen so let's begin okay step 1 is state the null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis right first you have got an idea or guess about how things might be related let's say you think that in general men might be taller than women right and that's your initial thought but in the world of hypothesis testing you need to set up two opposite statement which is the null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis so null hypothesis as i said we represent as has zero is like saying there is nothing special going on there like men are not taller than women on average that's your null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis is your original guess but in a testable form here it would say men are taller than women on average right so that is your state the null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis right now next step is says like collect your data right so now you need some evidence to support this statement right this means collecting data remember how you gather this information really matters are you setting up an experiment or just observing what's happening out there each method you know has its own way of collecting and interpreting data that we'll talk about in our next session anyway next is your calculate a statistical test right and here guys you play with the numbers to see if there is any noticeable you know difference between groups think of it as looking for pattern or unusual things that stand out right if your data show clear difference that aren't just by chance like a lot of men being taller than women your detective instinct are on point right and then the fourth step says construct acceptance and rejection region that's very important thing like here's you know where you really make a call do you have enough evidence to confidently say that your initial guess was right 
usually you look at value called p value right if this p value is really low typically less than 0.05 it's like saying this isn't just a coincidence there is something going on here so you might reject the null hypothesis right and the fifth one is present the finding or result like finally you share what you have found this means not just saying what you discovered but also explaining the numbers that got you here right and in the end you will say whether your original guess was supported or not right did you find that men are generally taller than women or was there no significant difference this is where you wrap up your detective story and that's how you do your hypothesis testing right now let's talk about statistical tests right and uh, imagine you're trying to figure out if you know what you're seeing in your data like survey results or experience outcome is just by chance or something worth noticing right and these kind of tests are like detective that help you figure out this right and they work by comparing your actual data to what you'd expect if you guess the null hypothesis and if you know there are two key things these tests give you first test statistic so this number shows how different your data is from what the null hypothesis predicts it's like how far off the mark you are then we have also p value this is the probability of your you know getting your results or more extreme ones right if the null hypothesis is true it's like the odds of your data being a fluke right then there is types of statistical test there are three main types each doing its own things right first is comparison test these tests are like references in a sports game you know determining if one team or a group really did better than the other then the next is regression test think of this as detectives trying to figure out if one thing caused another right another is correlation test and these are like matchmaker seeing if two things get along or relate to each other but they don't jump to conclusion about whether one causes the other right so that is all about your statistical tests now we'll talk about what is alpha level it's very important because in uh, once they have asked question based on that so in that case this particular topic becomes really important that you should know about who knows in your next exam this might appear again but anyway let me tell you the alpha level is your kind of oops right it's the chance you are willing to take being wrong when you say there is something interesting in your data when there is not right often set at 5% 0.05 it's like saying i'm 95% sure i'm right but there is a 5% chance i'm inviting the wrong person in my party right then the next we have like anova and what is this so this is a kind of group comparer think of one way anova is like talent show judge who can handle many contestant at while a t test another judge can only compare two contestant at a time anova can handle three or more it's not cool to keep using t test for multiple groups right because it's like giving extra chance you know to some contestant to win unfairly so then we have again another important t test what is that t test they are like referees in one on one basketball game comparing just two players samples they focus on finding out if the average score means you know of these two players are different enough to be significant or if they are just coincidentally different right in simple terms let me tell you these tests help you to make sense of your data and tell you if what you are seeing is likely real or just by chance right they are tools to help you know validate your findings and make sure you are on the right track right so that was all about the uh, different kind of tests right now we'll talk about errors in hypothesis very important in this exam itself they have asked this question in 2024 itself and let me tell you what is this errors in hypothesis basically you know just imagine you're a judge in a talent show okay you have got to decide if a performance is truly awesome the real deal or just like 
okay not so special right sometime you might make a mistake right that's pretty much what happens in research with hypothesis testing also so there are two main errors in hypothesis testing that researchers can make right type one error so this is like just saying a performance is mind-blowing when it's actually just average in research it means you're rejecting a null hypothesis right and when you actually shouldn't it's like being too quick to say you know the performance was awesome right so in basically you are rejecting it you're rejecting a null hypothesis that is your type 1 error right an example i'll give you the example imagine a pharmaceutical company tests a new kind of drug to see if it's more effective than this existing drug then the null hypothesis will be like there is no difference in effectiveness between the new drug and the existing one however the test result incorrectly shows that the new drug is more effective leading to the rejection of the null hypothesis and this is a type 1 error the company thinks the new drug is better when in reality it's not so that is your type 1 error now we'll talk about type 2 error that is in simple term false negative and what is it let me tell you this is the complete opposite of type 1 it's like saying a performance is nothing special when it's actually amazing in research it's failing to reject the null hypothesis when it's actually false it's like not noticing the diamond because it's a plain box right now let's see the example then you'll understand better let's say a researcher is studying the effect of a special diet on weight loss okay the null hypothesis might state that the diet has no effect on weight loss and the study results may incorrectly indicate that there is no significant weight loss from the diet right leading the researcher to accept the null hypothesis however in reality the diet is effective but the study failed to detect it right and this is a type 2 error right the researcher concludes the diet doesn't work when it actually does i hope these errors are clear right now now in our next session we'll talk about formulate the research design methodology and it's very important that you should attend so i'll see you in our next session so for now have a good day and bye bye